in this specimen called organ package by some, the thoracic and abdominal viscera were removed as a block from the cadaver and then dissected. Part of the aorta, inferior vena cava, kidneys, ureters, bladder were then removed and dissected further. That specimen is plastinated as female genitourinary organs. This is the diaphragm separating the thoracic and the abdominal organs. From your knowledge, try and recognize all these structures in the thorax, the trachea, the esophagus, branches from the aortic arch, the superior vena cava, and what would this artery be? That is the left anterior descending or the anterior interventricular branch of the left coronary. This fold of peritoneum is the falciform ligament and it contains in its lower free border the obliterated left umbilical vein. It is called the round ligament of the liver. This J-shaped structure here is the stomach with its lesser curvature and its greater curvature. This here is the pylorus and this is part of the duodenum. The rest of the duodenum is not seen here as that is retroperitoneal. This structure going across is the transverse colon with its two bends or flexures. On the left here is the splenic flexure and this one on the right is the hepatic flexure. The stomach is completely surrounded by peritoneum. The fold of peritoneum which extends from the lesser curvature of the stomach to the liver is called the lesser omentum. It's also called the gastrohepatic ligament. The fold which extends from the greater curvature and hangs down like a curtain covering most of the abdominal viscera is the greater omentum. Part of the greater omentum here perhaps have been torn and some part is stuck to the transverse colon. In this section, note the coils of jejunum which are then continuous with the ilium. This here is the mesentery, the fold of peritoneum which goes from the small intestine to the posterior abdominal wall. As you have perhaps noticed that all these folds, the mesentery or the omenta, are for the blood vessels which are contained within them to protect those. And along with the blood vessels, it also contains some lymph nodes and uh, some nerves. This tube that you are seeing here, this T-tube, was inserted to inflate the intestine to introduce some air into it and before that to clean it up. The ileum then is continuous with this uh, cecum. This dilated proximal part of the large intestine is the cecum and then here is the ascending colon. Three distinguishing features of the colon are the longitudinal bundles of muscle fiber called tenia, and there are three bands of those fibers. These little fat-filled pouches called appendices epiploike, and this third is the saculated appearance called hostre. The appearance is because the tenia is not as long as the length of the colon. If you trace the tenia, then they end in the appendix, and that is often used to locate the position of the appendix. In this view, where do you think the spleen is going to be located? It's going to be located deep to the diaphragm, just in that position. That's where it is. Hard for you to see, but gives you the location. This, by the way, 
is the aorta. It is into that that this pipe is going. Here is the inferior vena cava. And this structure here that I am pointing now is the esophagus. Uh, 